Greetings from Mumbai, India. This is Professor Dr. Deepak Jumani from Mumbai. And I, at the outset, thank Dr. Zaman Sheikh, Dr. Javed Bhai, Dr. Abdul Basi, and my chairpersons, Dr. Hakim Ali and Dr. Somia, for giving me the honor and the opportunity to share my thoughts, views, concepts, and passion. The topic given to me on this update in diabetes is diabetes and erectile dysfunction. With pranams and prayers to God, I thank my teachers, Dr. Opi Kapoor, Dr. Prakash Kothari, and Dr. Sashank Joshi, and I beseech them to bless me always. When we think of erectile dysfunction, we must understand that it is an endothelial dysfunction. The vascular endothelium produces endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, which potentiates the chemical signaling molecule nitric oxide, which converts guanosine triphosphate into cyclic guanosine monophosphate in the smooth muscle cell with the help of an enzyme called guanylyl cyclase. But the cyclic GMP through protein kinase G and other mechanisms relaxes the smooth muscles and allows the blood to flow inside. But sadly, this cyclic GMP hydrolyzes into 5-GMP with the help of an enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5. So if we look at the therape therapeutic angle or if we look at the physiology angle, all a man needs is a good endothelium and hence erectile dysfunction is an endothelial dysfunction. He needs optimum quantity of nitric oxide. He needs cyclic GMP to be there in more bioavailable form so the blood can remain inside. And he needs something to block the PD5 which we have in the form of PD5 inhibitors like sildenafil, tadalafil, eudenafil and verdenafil. According to American Psychiatric Association, the symptoms of erectile dysfunction should persist for six months and there should be significant distress and no mental disorders. True and beyond doubt that endothelium derived nitric oxide is an anti atherosclerotic molecule. It is also an anti thrombotic molecule. Friends, diabetes is a sexual health tsunami of our century. The pathophysiology is multifold. Most common thing is the advanced glycated end products increase the level of oxygen-free radicals increase, nitric oxide synthesis is impaired, upregulation of rho a rho kinase pathway, autonomic neuropathy, and impaired cyclic GMP availability. Prevalence of diabetes is more than doubled in men in India and China. So I call China and India, or Chindia, are the diabetes capital of the world. And erectile dysfunction is the commonest complication of diabetes. So I call Chindia are the erectile dysfunction capital of the world. Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are associated with increased risk of erectile dysfunction, which is seen in more than 50% of men with diabetes. In Massachusetts male aging study, diabetic men showed threefold probability of having ED when compared with men with non-diabetics. So the cause of ED, it could be psychogenic, vasculogenic, neurogenic, hormonogenic, drug-induced, and of course, genetic. They found on chromosome 6, Simon loci, which is significantly associated with the risk of erectile dysfunction. If we learn the molecular basis of diabetes-associated ED, there's a turning off of genes which is involved in muscle relaxation. So through rho A, rho kinase, these genes have been studied and they found that there is upregulation of this and the muscles do not relax or there is vasoconstriction in the microvasculature. Apoptosis, which play a critical role in diabetes associated ED, and there is a decreased expression of anti apoptosis gene BCL2 in the cavernous tissue, which is again responsible for cell death and organ degenerations. How do we manage erectile dysfunctions? To rule out psychogenic ED, you should know that patients who are less than 40 years of age and have the symptoms of ED come acutely, and if they have morning erections, they are having psychogenic erectile dysfunctions. They don't need PD5 inhibitors. All they need is counseling. We assess erectile dysfunction with various validated questions. The two common questionnaires which we use on a day-to-day -day practice are IREF 15 questionnaires and SHIM 5 questionnaires. These are very effective and very important to understand, diagnose, and also prognosis. The strategies to manage are we advise them on smoking, diet, exercise, blood pressure needs to be controlled, lipids need to be controlled, HbA1c should be less than 7, eye, feet and oral eye hygiene has to be examined every time when your patient comes to you, put them on guardian drugs like aspirin, ACE inhibitors and statins, work them up for heart because there's a clear link between cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction and also needs to give them some drugs which are good for importance. We do the hormone assay complete. We do the sonography of the scrotum and Doppler studies. We do PSA, 
We do digital rectal examination and Regiscan, which is a novel gadget which we use. A new concept, salivary tumor necrosis factor alpha is now used to detect severity of erectile dysfunction, and these can be medically treated. The new study, which is now available to all of us, is a simple CBC, that is complete blood count, and we do the platelet lymphocyte ratio. If the platelet lymphocyte ratio is more than 104, he's got mild erectile dysfunction. If it's more than 116, he's got a moderate erectile dysfunction. If it is more than 136, it is severe erectile dysfunction. By just doing a simple CBC, you can understand or you can diagnose the severity of erectile dysfunction in your patients. Even if you are embarrassed not to ask the patient about ED, this is a simple test where you can do it at all. So if you have to treat the first line of therapy is oral drugs with counseling and lifestyle measures, injection of papaverin and others in the intracavernous tissue, counseling and lifestyle measures, vacuum therapy and intraurethral prostaglandins, again with counseling and lifestyle measures. If all these fail, we send our patients to urologists to do penile implants or anastomosis surgery, but counseling and lifestyle measures seems to be the main stay of the treatment for erectile dysfunctions. We have four PD-5 inhibitors which are available, sildenafil, verdenafil, tadalafil and eudenafil. The longest acting is Tadalafil. The shortest acting is Sildenafil and Verdenafil. And because of the shorter duration of action, Verdenafil has less adverse side effects compared to Tadalafil. And even in type 1 diabetics, Verdenafil is a drug of choice. There are a lot of side effects like headache, flushing, nasal congestion, dizziness, dyspepsia, visual disturbance, some cases of malignant melanoma have been seen. The contraindications are nitrates or recent cardiovascular event or any anatomical penile defect like Peyronie's disease, sickle cell anemia, myelomas and leukemias. Tadalafil once a day in low dose has been proven beyond doubt in patients with diabetics. A 12-week treatment of Tadalafil improves the sexual function irrespective of whatever be the HbA1c. Even if he has hypertension, prostatic hypertrophy or dyslipidemia, it shows improvement in sexual dysfunction. Novel therapy is low-intensity shock wave therapy, which is very good for mild to moderate in, uh, erectile dysfunction. Even platelet-rich plasma has been tried extensively everywhere, shows very good results with mild to moderate moderate uh, erectile dysfunction. There are novel targets which are now on the pipeline. Platelets, microparticles, myeloperoxidase, hemoxygenase, sonic hedgehog, gallantin, stromal vascular, VEGF, soluble, GCA, rho kinase inhibitors, melanocotton receptors, platelets, stem cell, gene cell, nanoparticles. These are all in the pipeline and there are good studies which are still going on, but nothing has been, there is no robust evidence as yet. Metformin, which we give for, to our patients for diabetes, has now been proven to improve endothelial functions. SGLT2 inhibitors, along with metformin, because of the class properties or the effect of these drugs, they are giving patients normal physiological erections, which they do not get if they don't use these drugs or if their hyperglycemia or hypertension is not under control. Just by giving them anti-diabetic anti drugs, we can give them good erections. They don't need PD-5 inhibitors, these patients. Buried penis syndrome is seen, which can be treated with one gram of metformin, application of sesame seed oil and L-arginine gel. In, the, in 24 weeks, we find these obese patients are able to look at their penis and they get good erections. So my take home messages are take a detailed history. Also take histories about consumption of various drugs and relationship issues. The 2008 revision of the process care model of management of erectile dysfunction shows that counseling and lifestyle therapy lifestyle measures, dietary recommendations are very useful in these patients. Of lifestyle should be your religion. You may be Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, whatever it is, but make lifestyle as your religion and medicine. Vegan diet, exercise 150 minutes per week, sleep for six to seven, six to eight hours, uh, avoid certain antihypertensive medications like beta blockers and diuretics, avoid smoking and alcohol, stress reductions. All PD-5 inhibitors do not increase the desire which we have. There are 30 to 40 percent who are non-responders in them. So the basha of all is testosterone, but we need to give it in caution. We can't give it to younger patients because of the fear of azuspima. We can't give it to old patients because they can get heart failures and prostatic issues. So we need to give it in the cause. So what is the best? The raja of all is L-arginine and fenugreek. L-arginine is an amino acid which produces nitric oxide. Fenugreek has proven in saponized form to have a free testosterone-like effect which increases the desire and lifestyle modification which reverses all the metabolic syndrome, even diabetes. So it's really nice to know that with lifestyle modification, erectile dysfunction is a correctile dysfunction. So my this is my book, Sex Has No Expiry Date, which is available on Amazon. My last slide, erectile dysfunction is the common in diabetes, is a tip of an iceberg, is the earliest marker of coronary artery disease, 
erectile dysfunction is also endothelial dysfunctions. PD PD E5 inhibitors, short course of testosterone is a promise. L-arginine supplements and fenugreek is a boon. A heart that loves is always young. Age, weight, height are just numbers. Lifestyle measures can reverse metabolic syndrome. And if happens, erectile dysfunction is a correctile dysfunction. And if so, sex really has no expiry date. Thank you all for your love. I'll be ready and happy to answer any questions, any queries you have. Thank you very much. Thank you all.